Good morning. Welcome to Lincoln Community Church. We call this place home, and if today is your first day with us, we want to say welcome home. In the 118th chapter of Psalms, in the 24th verse, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We look outside and there's blue sky and it's sunshine. That's not why we are rejoicing in it. We are rejoicing because God made this day, amen? amen? And here we are on his day in his house surrounded by his children. That's something to rejoice about, amen? amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and call us your children. We thank you for the blessings that we've seen today and the hope that we have for tomorrow. We invite your Holy Spirit to fill this sanctuary today. Fill our hearts. Be with Pastor JR as he brings your word. And then, Lord, when we leave this place, let us be able to say, it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Bless us, for we ask it in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing. Amen. We're here to give God glory this morning, so let's sing about that. Amen? To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. God good? God is so good. Let's sing that this morning. God is so good. Here we go.
seated this morning. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the 139th Psalm. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts, my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. May God bless this reading of the word to our hearts this morning. sang to God be the glory and we sang God is so good how about if we sing how great thou art I know it's one of our favorites let's all sing it together shall we
recently got a little note on the yellow thing about the songs. And one of the notes, and God bless your heart, thank you for turning that in. One of them said, no more four-verse songs. <laughs> I hear that. We try to do three verses. How do you do How Great Thou Art and leave one of the verses out? Right? So we're going to sing the last verse. Here we go. <laughs> when Christ shall come, shout morning. Well, you do every week. Thank you, JR. Thank you. And all of you up here, we actually have a church plant up here on the platform here. <laughs> no. Thank you so much for all of you who help us with our songs. Well, I want to welcome you. And as Jody said earlier, we hope that uh, you feel welcome and this is home to you. This morning, the flowers right here are in honor of the 60th wedding anniversary of Norman Risha Shockley. Uh, their wedding anniversary was last Thursday, so they're probably out somewhere celebrating. Where, where are they? Oh, that's a good place to go. Yeah, this time of year. <laughs> well, good for them. And uh, also today, we want to uh, celebrate with G. Paula and Jerry Arndt and their wedding anniversary today. Paul and Jerry, where are you this morning? There you are over there. God bless you. <laughs> now we hope this morning, particularly if you happen to be here for the first time, please do us the honor of just filling out one of those little yellow slips or the, the notebook that comes up and down the aisle and, and let us know who you are. And, and uh, if you wouldn't mind giving us an address, we'd like to drop you something in the mail, a little more personal. And don't worry, I won't show up on your doorstep. I'm not going to be out there uh, uh, looking for donations or whatever they look for. You know? <laughs> uh, no, seriously, we would love to get to know you and send you a little something that expresses our appreciation for you being here today and lets you know a little bit more about what we do here. One of the things that we do is we encourage our people to be involved in uh, ministering the love of Christ uh, to our community and, and to our world at large. And one of the things that we've been doing the last many years is participating with Gleanings for the Hungry. That is a faith-based organization down in Dinuba. If you don't know where Dinuba is, it's down near Visalia. And uh, they have quite a, a, a spread there. And um, farmers from all over send some of their crops that they're not going to use there to them, donate them. And this time of year, they dry them out. This is cereal, uh, cereal, it looks like cereal. It's soup, it's dried soup, and they make this down there. They dry the fruit and then they, uh, they uh, put it all together. And that's what our people do when they go down. It's all volunteer, and you're there for the whole week. They've got a magnificent spread there. If you've got an RV, unbelievable RV park. They've got everything you need. We eat together every night and every morning at noon. We have devotionals in the morning and there's a wonderful time in the evening. Um, you work all week long, but it is quite an experience. If you'd like to know more about this, uh, right after the service today, grab a cup of coffee and a cookie, go right through the door, double doors back there into room 122, 
And uh, Jim Bond, Jim, stand up so they know who you are. Stand up back there. Jim's been leading our group down there for quite some time, and he's going to fill you in. He's doing a little uh, orientation today and next week. So if for some reason today you can't, um, after all, the Super Bowl's over, so you don't need to get home right away. Uh, but uh, Jim will be doing it next week, too. Find out what, about this. They'd love to have you go, and we have a number of our people go every year, and uh, quite, a, quite an experience. So anyway, uh, in two weeks, I want to remind you something. In two weeks, first Sunday in March, we have what we call Celebration Sunday. That is an annual time of the year where we just look back in our year and look at what God has done in our midst. And this year, we're frankly going to look back for three years. We have come through COVID. God bless us, and he blessed us. And uh, we want to reflect. You're going to hear from a number of people, testimonies. It's going to be a very, very special time. We have some special refreshments afterwards. So just put that on your calendar. Uh, the first Sunday, the 5th of March, Celebration Sunday. The only other thing I really want to mention here, and by way of announcement this morning, is to remind you, we have a prayer time here every Thursday morning at 1130, right here in front of this altar. Whoever comes, we pray for about half an hour. We pray for people, pray for our church, pray for our nation. And uh, we would love to have you come and just join us. It's a very special time. Now, one of the things I want to do this morning is I want to introduce to you uh, another one of our elder candidates. And uh, this morning, I want to invite up here. <laughs> I got to find my little cheat, cheat, cheat here. Well, anyway, Dale, come on up here. <laughs> I want to introduce to you this morning, Dale. And uh, where in the world is my cheat, cheat, cheat? There it is. There it is. <laughs> Dale Ziccarelli and, and his wife, Leanne. Leanne, stand up in the back so they can all see you back there. God bless you. Nice to have you here this morning. And I wanted to introduce Dale this morning. Uh, on that particular Celebration Sunday, we affirm those elders that our nominating committee have interviewed and put before you. And, and Dale is, uh, we're have two this year, and uh, Dale is the second one. Introduced the other guys last week. But Dale, um, you... Tell me, you guys were living up where before you moved down this way? Up near Oroville. Oroville, and then uh, from there. And you used to have a camera shop in town. Sunrise, yeah, Sunrise and Kirby Action yeah, Camera. Yeah, and uh, I think my wife even took some stuff over there once. Um, you've been down here for how long? Right now, two, almost two years. Okay, okay. And uh, what brought you and Leanne to this church? Well, we were looking for churches, and Leanne will sit down, and she'll get on the Internet and the web, and so did I, and we found... You're preaching, okay. and you and, and, and uh, Pastor Jody and uh, and the songs, and we we love the songs here and the people and the, the friendliness of it all. And, well, and she said, "Let's do it there," and I said, "That sounds good to me." Well, it's a joy to have you both here, and uh, I wanted to introduce him to you this morning. And uh, Dale, is just a really terrific guy. For, uh, you, for many years, you were involved, very involved with the Gideons, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, he was. So he's very much involved in our Bible study every uh, Wednesday, and. Uh, we're great to have you here. And I've asked Dale if he would lead us in prayer this morning. And you have a prayer sheet there, of course. Uh, there's a lot of names we listed there. And please take that during the week and pray for these folks. But I'm going to ask Dale to pray for us this morning as we come to the throne of grace. And, uh, and to give thanks for all that God has done in our midst. And then he's going to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Father, thank you for this church that you brought my wife and I to, and uh, we're grateful for that. And thank you for all your love, your grace, your mercy, and blessings, Father, you pour upon us each and every day. Thank you for the, your children that are here today, and uh, we just uh, love this church and what they're doing. And thank you for Pastor Mike and Pastor Jody and uh, Pastor JR. Um, and just bless everyone today and uh, bless their, uh, their families. And I want to bless for their salvation of all their, all their friends and relatives as well. Let me do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless.
one other little thing I want to mention, although they're coming for the offering this morning. Roger Cummings, where are you, Roger? Where's Roger? He was up here. There he is. Stand up, Roger. And you all see Roger. He's part of our worship team here. This is his last Sunday. He is moving to Florida. Well, I want you to know, my brother, we're going to miss you. God bless you. And, uh, and at the close of the service morning, he's going to pray for us. But we thank you so much for your ministry and Godspeed to you as you go. Good morning. This, little, this precious song I'm going to sing is a song that I sang as a first solo when I was 10 years old at a church, a little church, Baptist church in St. Paul, Minnesota, where we regularly attended. And now here I stand by God's grace to sing about my precious and your precious Jesus, our Savior. So much. Well, it's an honor to be standing here this morning in this pulpit. And I appreciate Pastor Mike asking me to bring a message to his people. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the honor to be here, for the honor to sing, 
worship to you, to be able to preach your sermon to your people that you have laid on my heart, Lord. I pray that it will have the effect that you wanted. Just be with us throughout the remainder of this day. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, what I'd like to do is start off this morning with a little quiz. Kind of get your, you know, your brain operating a little bit before you fall asleep. The first question I have is, which country makes Panama hats? Oh, you know what? I don't have my uh, clicker. Can somebody bring me my clicker? I'm going to need that. Um, which country makes Panama hats? Ecuador. China. How, how many would have said Panama? Right? That's the obvious answer, right? Where did you say it was? Ecuador. Ecuador is the right answer. I got my clicker. Here you go. How long did the Hundred Years' War last? Why are you laughing? How long did the Hundred Years' War last? How many would say 100 years? Oh, you're on to me, aren't you? I didn't figure you'd catch on so quick. The Hundred Years' War actually lasted 116 years from 1337 to 1453. Now, here's one you'll all get. From which animal do we get cat gut? Do I hear cats? What? Cats is the obvious answer, right? Well, that's wrong. We actually get cat gut from sheep and goats. Mm -hmm. See, I got you, got you interested now. Here you go, last one. How long did the 30 years war last? How many would say 30? Rod, you like 30? We have a winner. The 30-year war actually lasted 30 years from 1618 to 1648. Here's the point of the quiz this morning. It's to make the point that our knowledge is very limited. Even when we think we know something, we're often very wrong, aren't we? Well, here's the good news. Fortunately, that's not true of God. God knows everything, and he is never wrong. This morning, we're going to be looking at the 139th Psalm, which uh, Pastor Mike and Diane so eloquently read those scriptures for us this morning. And most Bible teachers will tell you that of all the 150 Psalms, this is one, uh, one of the ones that describes best God's personal relationship with us. And it kind of lays out the idea that God isn't far away. Rather, he's right here with us at all times. And the first thing we see this morning from the 139th Psalm is that God sees everything about us. And we're going to look at those verses that were read. Uh, it says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. Now, this section is describing an attribute of God that theologians call omniscience. And if you split that into two words, omni means all, and science is the study of knowing about the universe. So omniscience simply means all-knowing. God knows everything. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, it says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. 
Folks, there's no question that God can't answer. There's no problem that confuses him. He's never surprised. He's never shocked. And he never stops and says, Oh, really? Those first verses we looked at in that psalm talks about three specific areas that concern you and I. And the first, it says, You know when I sit and when I rise. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. In other words, God knows everything you do. He knows when you plop down into your lazy boy. And he knows when you get back up and go out to the kitchen for some more nachos and cheese. <laughs> Secondly, it says, God also knows every word I say. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. Listen, he doesn't just know it after I say it. He knows it before I say it. Now, I don't know you about you, but I've said some things in the past that I really regretted saying. I wish I, wish I hadn't have done it. And then I think, you know, God, you already knew I was going to say that. And, and you already knew that I was going to regret it. Couldn't you just, like, give me a little warning, you know, like... Maybe just keep your mouth shut. Maybe, maybe even send me an email, you know, that says, JR, Friday at 2.38 p.m. Don't say anything. Keep your mouth shut. Use duct tape if necessary. Signed, God. I'm surprised I didn't get one from Pastor Mike this week that said, JR, Sunday at 10.30 a.m., The third thing we see is that God knows every thought we have. Verse 2 says, you perceive my thoughts from afar. Think about that for a minute. God knows everything you've ever thought. God knows what you just now thought. I hope it wasn't, I sure hope the preacher makes this short because I'm hungry this morning. <laughs> we'll be short. Verse 6 of that psalm says, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Loosely translated, that says, that blows me away. And the thought, I mean, how do you, how do you grasp a God, a God who knows every thought that you've ever had? And the thought comes to my mind, if God sees and knows everything I do or say or even think, what does that mean for us? How does that impact us? Well, for one thing, it means he has enormous power to encourage us in doing what's right. And it also means that he has the power to help me during temptation. I know you all know this verse, but we're going to look at it anyway. No temptation has overtaken me or overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. To me, that's an encouraging verse because God knows in advance what you're going to face and he promises to provide a way out of that temptation. God already knows about it and he's already prepared an escape route, a way out of that temptation. To me, I hope to you, that's a comforting thought. The second thing we see in this psalm is that God is always with us. In verses 5 through 8, it says, You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. God is everywhere. In these verses, David starts talking about what theologians call uh, God's omnipresence. Again, omni means all, and so this just means always present. It means God is present everywhere in the universe at the same time. Just think about that. The nearest star is about four and a half light years away from the earth. 
And to reach that by a jet plane, it would take you a mere 53 billion years. But the Hubble Space Telescope has taken pictures and sent them back of galaxies that are 2,000 times farther away than that. And the light from those galaxies left there 7,000 years ago and are just now reaching our part of the universe. That's insane to think about that. But understand this. God is fully there in those far away galaxies just as he is in this room with us this morning. So look up and say, good morning, God. Good morning. Oh, you do better than that. Good morning, God. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 and 17 says, For him, for by him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. And in him... All things hold together. What's that, what that's saying is that God holds everything together. And if he went on vacation, this universe would fall apart. Now, we probably don't have to worry about God going on vacation. I mean, there's really no place to go, right? He's already there. <laughs> People throughout history have been asking the question, where is God? Seekers want to know the answer to that because they want to find God as if he's the one that's lost. A person who's carrying a lot of guilt wants to know where God is so that he can run the other way. A hurting person wants to know because they feel abandoned by God and they say, where is God when I need him? And the lonely person wants to know where God is and why do they feel so alone? So the takeaway here is this. If I know that God is always with me, then I can depend on him no matter what I face, no matter what comes my way, no matter how bad things look, I know he's right there with me. Always. Verse 10 of that psalm says, Your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. You see, folks, once you realize that God is always with you, then you can understand that you really have nothing to worry about. He will guide you and hold you fast. You can trust him no matter what comes along. Now the next section of this psalm is one of the best known parts of the Bible. And it's one of the reasons why so many people love this psalm. And it's that God planned out everything about us. Verses 13 through 16 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book. I, I want to read that last part again. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained or set aside or consecrated for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. That's an astounding set of scriptures. I think we should probably read those every day to remind ourselves of that. Folks, let's face it. In our society, we put a lot of importance on how we look, right? It's amazing what we do to make ourselves look good. Liposuction, <laughs> implants, facial scrubs, facelifts. Nose jobs, tanning beds, and gobs and gobs of makeup, etc., etc., etc. There was a television special on PBS, uh, yeah, PBS regarding this subject, and the commentator said this: Tomorrow morning, if every woman in America woke up feeling good about her appearance, 
the American uh, economy would collapse. <laughs> I mean, whole industries, right, are built on the notion that women are afraid they won't be lovable unless they measure up to some abstract standard of perfection. Now, unless you think I'm just picking on the ladies, I know some guys, too, are, who are obsessed with the way they look. And I'm not immune. Listen, I'm human. I, I'm immune. I'm, I get all the things that everybody else gets. Uh, I went to get a haircut recently. And I told the guy, I said, man, leave my cowlick alone. You know, don't touch my cowlick back there. Uh, the last person that cut it, cut it way too short. And it stood up like alfalfas, you know, on uh, Little Rascals. Huh? You know the Little Rascals, right? If you don't know the Little Rascals, you're too young for this congregation. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't long before this guy had me talked into a $25 tube of gunk, you know, that I could put it in and put it on my hand and just, you know, I'll keep that cow leg down. I got to thinking to myself on the way home, you know, I could have saved myself $25 if I'd just done what my mom used to do. You remember? <laughs> Twenty-five bucks I could have saved. Oh, and listen, don't forget about the handkerchief. You remember the handkerchief, the little laced handkerchief when you, yeah, you're going to church, you're going to school, or wherever you're going. You got a little smudge on your face, huh? You remember that? Here, I'll get that for you. Yeah, let me get that one too. Yeah, you look good, huh? Y'all remember that, right? The handkerchief. Oh, God bless our mothers. Listen, Proverbs 31.30 tells us that charm can be deceitful and beauty doesn't last. I don't care how hard you work at it, how much money you throw at it, beauty doesn't last. It's kind of like the two old men at the rest home. They were out walking and an elderly woman streaked by and she had nothing on. The first guy looked and said, did you see what that woman was wearing? The other guy said, no, but it sure needed ironing. <laughs> oh, God help us. Look, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 7 says, Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Us humans place a big emphasis on how we look, but God doesn't place any emphasis on how we look. All he cares about is your heart. How's your heart this morning? Here's the point I want you to get this morning. God created you exactly the way you are. It was part of God's perfect plan for you. He wanted you to look just like you look. He wanted you to have exactly the skills, the abilities, and the talents that you have. That was his perfect design for you. Do you ever look at yourself and you say, Wow, God, you did a pretty good job. I am wonderfully made. Way to go, God. Well, some of you may, but I got, a, I got a feeling that most of us aren't really all that excited about the way God made us. A lot of us are very self-critical, always putting ourselves down. Maybe you don't say it out loud. Maybe you walk in here on Sunday morning, and you're smiling, you're acting like you got it all going on, but inside you're saying, I'm fat, I'm dumb, I'm ugly. I'm slow. I have no talent. I'm a bad person. I'm a terrible Christian. I'm always late. I'm so uncoordinated. I just hope I don't spill coffee on anybody this morning. <laughs> Listen. God wants you to stop putting yourself down. Think about it. When you put yourself down, who are you really putting down? 
When you say all those negative things about yourself, you're really pointing to the Creator who made you. And when you say, God, I'm worthless, I'm no good, I can't do anything, you're really saying, God, you really blew it when you made me. God says, <clears throat> no, I didn't. God says, I created you just the way I wanted you. But you just haven't figured out yet how much I love you and what my purpose is for you. I can't emphasize enough this morning. You are a marvelous creation, and you're designed exactly the way God wanted you. You might remember the old phrase from years ago that says, God don't make no junk. Amen. Folks, you are not junk. You're a wonderful creation of the God of the universe. And not only did he make you a wonderful creation, but God has a plan for your life. The psalm says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You see, God has a purpose for every person. And because God has a purpose for you, you're on special assignment from God. And when you understand that, it makes all the difference in the world. Well, let's take a look at the last section of this psalm. And that is that God is continually leading us. Verses 23 and 24 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the everlasting. What that means is that God is always thinking about you all the time. He's constantly thinking about you, constantly uh, leading you so that you can follow him and be blessed. You know, as I get older, more and more in my life, I I'm trying to live out my life for the audience of one. And that's God. We've all been caught up, right? Trying to please everybody else and, and, and do everything just right so that everybody will think we're really cool and great and stuff. Folks, in fact, I have that statement written in my Bible, the front of my Bible, so that I can see it every day. Live your life for the audience of one. Because ultimately, even though I, I care... It doesn't really matter how I appear to any of you or what any of you think of me. What matters is what God thinks of me. What matters is the integrity in your life when nobody is looking. Because somebody is looking. God. And God says, I see it. And it doesn't matter who else does. Because no good thing ever goes unrewarded. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not become weary in well-doing, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. As the worship team joins us this morning up on the platform here and we get ready to sing this closing song, let's recap. First, God sees everything about us. Secondly, God is always with us. Thirdly, God planned out everything about us. And lastly, God is continually leading us. So we know that God's presence is everywhere, and his presence is here with us this morning, whether or not you're aware of it. And he wants you to know him. Come on up. Get ready to sing, folks. Thank you. Come on up. He wants you to feel his love. If you're not sure that you know him this morning, if you don't feel like you're a wonderfully made creature of God, maybe you feel like junk. I don't know. Why don't you just stop right now and say, God, I'd like to know your presence in my life. You know, Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He says, I'm knocking on the door of your life, and if you'll just open up, I will come into your life and live with you and you with me. 
But let's not assume anything this morning. You might be here listening to this sermon about how much God loves you, and you've never invited Christ into your life. And you would like to do that this morning. Look, say along with me, Jesus Christ, come into my life right now. Forgive me of my sins, and let me have the assurance of your salvation. Heavenly Father, thank you for meeting with us this morning. We thank you that you are always with us and that you know us better than we know ourselves. Thank you that you are constantly thinking about each of us and looking for ways to help and guide us. Thank you for the confidence and the comfort that comes from your presence with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand, shall we, and sing that, that chorus, Oh, How He Loves You and Me. my last Sunday and I come with a very sorrowful heart because of it. This has been a wonderful church, wonderful people, and my wife at this point has reached a point in her health where she needs assistance more so than I can give. So we will be moving into a senior care facility. Uh, we looked at those facilities here in California. If we needed some help, the sons that we have here travel too much and are not always around. The son we have in Florida does not travel and he can be a more comfort, particularly if something happens to me, that's where she needs to be. Although I will say hurricanes hit there Humidity in the summer is almost unbearable, <laughs> but we must all sacrifice something. <laughs> so I can also think of no more fitting way to close than to offer what God gave to David in the 23rd Psalm that gives us some substance of hope that he is always around and you are never alone. Let us pray. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overfloweth. 
Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.